With many a school struggling to increase their meal uptake, today I hope you will enjoy our interview with Paul Jordan, who is the head teacher at Thamesview Infant School in East London, and he's achieved one of the highest meal uptakes in the country through he and his, his team's passion for the importance of school food. High meal uptake not only benefits the pupils, but the school as well, and of course, caterers too, and especially so during these um, during this cost of living crisis that we're currently facing. So, Paul, welcome to a Juniper interview with, and thank you for joining me. And perhaps we could start with a short introduction from yourself and hear about you and your fantastic school. So, hello, welcome. Um, I'm, I'm Paul Jordan. I've been um, teaching for almost 30 years. I'm a head teacher for 16 years. I'm from East London originally. My school's in one of the most deprived wards. In fact, the most deprived ward of one of the most deprived local authorities and nationally. Very disadvantaged, lots of very vulnerable children, a high ethnicity, an infant school, 438 pupils, the heart of what I do. It's my family, it's my life, and we do everything that we can do to help every child and their family achieve their best. I've been the head since 2007, twice outstanding, and we're hoping in our next Ofsted we'll be outstanding again. I'm sure you will be. So so in your school, obviously, all the pupils are entitled to a free school meal under the government's universal infant free school meal scheme. And no one can dispute the benefits of a hot, healthy, nutritious meal each day. And that for many pupils, this is their main meal of the day. So I'm sure you would agree, but I'd like to hear from you. This is the same for your school community, too, is it not? Absolutely. And we don't entertain pet lunches. So part of the work we do is really to break traditional dispositions to food because that is that tends to be a family thing that goes through generations and it tends to be that those families that insist their child wants a pack lunch tend to be um, maybe fussy heaters themselves or they are not exposed themselves to the range and the diverseness of food and flavors and textures and so going ballistic and um, ensuring that everyone as a hot dinner is a really good way of unpicking and turning around that cycle. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so also, and that, that's fantastic that you achieved what you have. So, so LASA, who's the country's education, catering, trade association, carried out a survey that told us, in addition to this, and you, you may have used this data, I'm not sure even if you're aware of it, but only 1.6% of packed lunches have that same nutritional content as, as the hot, healthy, nutritious school meal. And in addition to that, recent research by the School Food UK illustrates that it costs 110% more to prepare a packed lunch at home than it is to have a, a school meal. And obviously in, uni, in your school, all children are infants and they get it for free. But in other primary schools, that, that's a vital statistic for, for their parents, I think. And presumably, I think, as you mentioned before, in the area that you operate in, that's really key statistic, isn't it? That parents can be saving so much money by encouraging their children to have a, a, a free meal every day. There's, lo there's lots of benefits for the families to take up that offer, but it's much more complicated than saying, we don't want you to have a, a packed lunch. It's like an onion with lots and lots of layers and you've got to kind of unravel them and actually try to understand what is the block? Why did that family insist that they want to pack lunch or, or go? Um, or go Because really, where's the logic? When you've got a beautiful meal, a range of foods, flavours, you, know, you know, you're setting up your child for having sophisticated dates later in life to, you know, to go across the world and try different foods and flavours and all that colour and texture. Why would you then just want that? And the whole concept of policing the pack lunches and making rather harsh judgments on, on actually that's not acceptable is really um, is really quite divisive and an, an alleyway that we, we that we just don't really want to go down, really. It's more important, I think, is that certain families that actually this is really good for your pocket. It's really good for the child. So what are the barriers that are stopping you um, engaging with this? And once you've got that, then it's about working with that and unpicking it a bit further. So, Paul, obviously, um, I'm sure your catering team have done parent taster sessions. Has that been a real help for you in, in, in encouraging parents to, to make that switch to the school meal? Yes, it has. Food is very much, I'll often pick this, pick, this, um, pick this out, food is very, very much at the heart of what we do 
in school as well as all the learning and the family support that, that you would expect in an infant school. So we do lots of cooking events throughout the, um, the school year, which families come in. There's big food taster sessions where the catering team present menus. And that was always the reception families that would come to that. And they would be, you know, kind of wowed by that. And, and, and more recently, we've extended that to all of the years to, to, for the families to, to, to see that. You know, we have got a, a very engaging menu. And, and we're very lucky that, that we, we can sculpt our menu and evolve it um, as, as as we sit, see fit, so it meets the needs of the children. I've been doing this probably for um, ten years now, and so we've got more and more, more and more advanced and confident as, as the years go on. So we we, we very much fine tune the menu. So you know you don't want these things on on separate days. At the moment we've removed lots of starchy carby breads from the menu, so there's no sandwiches, no burgers, because I find that some of post-lockdown children were overly eating the bread and, and you know, so the flexibility and that creativity and that ownership that we, that we put into it um, really, really helps. We also have um, very high lunchtime, um, a lunchtime staff ratios. We're very fortunate because we've got very high ratios in our kitchen and that works well for us. And that allows the quality of service that we want, 28 staff, for 438 children hands-on who get to know the children and help be mums and dads with the children helping them make those choices seeing what they're eating and helping them to eat another thing that we that works very 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 well is that the school staff eat with the children if they can spend just 15 minutes in the hall during the lunch break we pay for their meal too and, uh, and so, of course, underlying that, it means that there's, a, there's good relationships, good connections. Lunchtime's a very happy, you know, a very happy place. It keeps the noise down. It, it's very lovely. But it also shows you that the, the, the quality of the food is really, really high. It's, it, and I'm very, very fortunate in the service that we have. Really good quality food that everyone, that everyone likes. Fantastic. And, and obviously, it's quite clear that that relationship you have with with the staff in the kitchen there is strong as well, which is crucial, is it not? I only know what we do. Yep, um, yep. But, you know, uh, the, the leadership team are very much involved at lunchtime, not because it's a duty, because they just believe that the importance of, of this journey of, of these traditional dispositions for food that we've got to change in order to help children's aspirations for the future. So we, so I've been personally over the last couple of weeks, um, you, you do it regularly, really. I, I'm modeling the language to the cooks. So, um, so they set that eye contact with the children and saying, you know, would you like, would you like roti? Would you like naan? So they're saying the food names to the children. The children are engaging with that. So that the children have got the names and therefore they're picking up on that. Therefore, more likely to say to parents, oh, last night I had barbecue chicken. Getting the getting the portions right, not not overly, not too large portions, but equally not too small, because large portions can actually stifle the children too. Do, do you want peas or sweet corn or both? Yeah. Giving those children, giving those children um, that choice. The staff knowing the children well as well, so knowing when very carefully to to maybe push them a little bit further. Come on, you like that? Are there any other messages that you want to get across? What I wanted to say there is um, it's important to have a good relationship with your cook so that you can model language, model the portions, model presentation. You encourage them to go the extra mile to get to know the children. And for those children that really are um, fussy eaters, it's about working, working with those. So we have a differentiated lunch club where children are um, maybe fussy have missed feeding steps in, in their own um, development. Fine motor, gross motor, um, uh, knife and forks, fingers, spoons, all on all on different messy play, all, yeah. all different stages and working with those children to get them on that journey. That's important. And there, are, there, there, there may well be just one or two children in the whole of the school that you've tried all of that with and it doesn't work. And if that's the case and you spoke to mum, and then mum and dad, then maybe, then they may have a packed lunch. But in 10 years of doing that, there's only been two children ever 
it's so much more than saying you can't have packed lunches. So that's the key of it. And you've got to work out why. And that's what I believe. And if you can work out the why and work with that, everyone will everyone will sign up to it. But Paul, thank you so very much for, for joining me this afternoon and talking through your experiences at Thames U. Because I think we both agree how important the, the hot, healthy school meal is each day and that relationship with the caterer as well. So thank you again and um, wishing you all the best for the future and the school. Thank you. Bye bye.